Thank you very much for watching our webinars. I hope you like it. So my company, Wapi, is creating all of this and I'll take my chance and tell you a little bit more about Wapi. If you're selling something, for example, you're selling wonderful sunglasses, you live in Italy and the Italian market is full of your sunglasses and everybody is very happy. So now you want to go global, you want to go international. So what you need? You need to find the right sales channel and then you need to send all these products to your customers. That's where Wapi comes in. We have integrated a huge amount of sales channels. We have a huge amount of partners, service providers in Ecom that will help you to expand to any country where you want. Send us an email, ask your question. Our key account manager will help you to grow your business to a new level. Thank you very much for being with us. Thank you that you subscribe and stay tuned. Good luck. Hi everyone, it's Wapi Webinars again with you. I'm very glad to be here. My name is Alexander Friedman. I'm co-founder and CEO of company Wapi. And with me today is our wonderful guest, Lisa Kinski. Hi, Lisa. Hi, Alexander. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Lisa is a marketing and partnership manager at Getida. And she is now in the USA in Georgia State, right? Yes, yes, in the state of Georgia, just outside of Atlanta, so we're on the East Coast. Yeah, so it's very, very early at your place now. I, I call it early. It's 7 a.m. Some people oh, have started okay. long it's since normal. started their day, but for me, it's, it's, for me, it's a little early, but I'm, I'm so excited to be on with y'all. I'm a 5 a.m. club member, so... Ooh, yeah. I've tried. <laughs> I have tried. <laughs> you didn't like it, yeah? It's just with my travel schedule, because Gatita goes yeah, to so yeah. many events and we sponsor so many things. It's just not mm -hmm. sustainable, unfortunately. At least I haven't figured it out. Uh, I'm sure someone has, but I can't get it down. <laughs> I, I'm sure the best way is just to find your own path, your own way. For the, I call it energy management. So not oh, the time like management, that. but the energy management. You must you must create everything so that you work on 100% yeah. energy. You know, when when that energy goes down, you don't work. You you think how to like return yeah. the energy. Then the energy I'm... comes back. You work. You do like 100 more things that you could. Right. It's the energy management. <laughs> I'm gonna borrow that if that's okay. I love of that course, so of much. <laughs> Cool. So before we start and we come to Gitida and to our topic, tell us a little bit about yourself, your story. How did you come to e-commerce world? What did you do before? What is your journey? Yeah, sure thing. So I uh, graduated college in December of 2016. I graduated from a university down here called Kennesaw State University with a degree in management and went straight into the criminal background screening industry, actually. So we were processing all of the record checks for criminal and for civil cases and also for pre-employment. So when you put on your application, I worked at such and such place doing such and such job. We would actually call that place and verify that you did do that mm. job at that rate, et cetera, et cetera. So I held many positions in that organization for about four years, just shy of four mm -hmm. years when in March of 2020, the pandemic hit and yeah. when all the courts are closed because employees can't come in naturally and nobody's getting hired. So there's no records to run. There's no work to be done. So in, in March of 2020, I was one of the unlucky few here that was uh, unemployed. So I spent the next several months fiercely applying for jobs, trying to find a new position. And I ended up getting hired on at a company called Noviland in July of 2021. And, or I'm sorry, in July of 2020. And mm -hmm. What Noviland does is they're an end-to-end -end supply chain service provider for e-commerce business owners. And of course, the lion's share of that is going to be Amazon sellers, right? Just because of their presence in the market. And that was really my first introduction into e-commerce. Other than just being a consumer, mm -hmm. I had never seen kind of the other side of the operation. So I worked on a, the marketing team and what Noviland largely did was help sellers with their sourcing 
So they had a network of factories mm -hmm. overseas that they helped them to find the right manufacturer for their product. Also helped with the shipping and logistics to anywhere in the world from China to anywhere. And then also 3PL solutions by coastally in the US. So pretty much everything mm -hmm. from start to finish before the product was listed on Amazon is what we were involved in. There was, you know, quality control testing, project oversight, yeah. packaging, all of those things. So that was really my first introduction into e -com. And after about two years there, and we had gone to a couple of shows, we started our own podcast and made a lot of connections. Um, the opportunity arose for me to join the Gatita team. And I've, I had already known them mm -hmm. for a couple of months. And they're such a wonderful group of guys. If you've met any of them, uh, people are probably familiar mm -hmm. with either Yoni or Rob or Eitan. Um, They're so wonderful. So I, I, I was very excited to join the team. So I jumped right on and cool. been the marketing and partnerships manager since. And what we do is FBA auditing and reimbursements. And I'll keep that part of the story short because it's kind of yeah. going to be the topic of of today and how that helps sellers be profitable. So. I, I love this one. I love to hear the stories how people come from absolutely different, yeah. you know, <laughs> absolutely different thing. Probably some few years ago, five years ago, you, you would even imagine that you would work in e-commerce world. Never, <laughs> absolutely never. And it's funny because during the pandemic. So my last six months at the criminal background screening firm, I had transitioned from sales into more of a marketing mm. and events role in college. I, I had an events position. And so during the pandemic, I pursued my certified digital marketing professional course. Mm -hmm. And I also became a certified wedding and event planner. So I thought what I would be doing was planning events and weddings, weddings when everybody was able to come back because the wedding industry was, I mean, decimated in 2020, right? But in 2021 yeah. and 2022, things were crazy. So I was like, yep, that's where my money is going to be. I, I, you know, I'd never thought that I'd find my way into to supply chain, chain, let alone working for a company that yeah. serves Amazon sellers. So yeah. No organizational wedding after you marry the e-commerce world. Yeah, I know. That's true. I that is so true. I I ended up doing two weddings formally, you know, getting getting paid mm -hmm. for them and then uh yeah, I just I'm married to Gatita now and there's no time. That's exactly <laughs> it. There's no time. <laughs> okay, thank you very much for uh, your introduction for your uh, sharing your journey. So our topic today is how to increase profitability on Amazon in Q4. And I know that you have prepared something special, interesting for us today. So uh, the stage is yours, please. Okay. Your turn. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So yeah, one of the top ways that we recommend sellers to remain profitable is doing what Gatita does, which is auditing your FBA inventory for discrepancies and filing for those reimbursements. And what we do a lot of times is actually teach sellers how to file these claims on their own, because while services like Gatita exist and they help to increase the efficiency and success rate of the claims process, it's absolutely possible to do on your own if you're already filing those claims yourself, or maybe if you have of a VA, um, definitely possible. So, so that's our number one recommendation for increasing profitability is to look for those discrepancies and file those claims. And, and I think that leads into a couple other questions you may have, which would be like, what is an FBA discrepancy, right? So an FBA- Actually, actually, actually the first okay. question would be to make it very interesting. So in general, in average, by doing the reimbursements, uh, how what is the average percentage like of yep. revenue or of money that people can get additionally like sure. if they start to do this sure so anywhere between one to three percent of a seller's annual inventory is impacted by a discrepancy that warrants a reimbursement so that that dollar amount that figure is going to change depending on how large of a seller you are but it's going to have the same percentage impact to your business so if you're a Gosh, I'm so poor at quick math. I want to say it's like if you're a, a, a $1 million seller, it's like $150,000 you could be leaving on the table. And then it just goes up from there. So um, that's it's, it's a pretty significant portion of the business. And sometimes that percent can be higher, sometimes lower. But on average, it's between 1% to 3%. So when you think cool. about adding those dollars back to your business, especially during exit, you can really improve that payout. But we feel mm -hmm. sellers should be 
increasing their profitability all throughout the year, regardless of whether or not they're heading towards an exit, because that's just going to give them more to reinvest and it'll help them grow on the platform. Cool. Now everything starts to be very interesting. Now tell us what is it, the reimbursement and how to do it. Okay, sure. So, so it all starts with identifying the discrepancies. So a discrepancy is really any difference in what Amazon shows occurred and what the seller shows occurred, right? So that can be the most common discrepancy type that we say are inbound shipments, inbound claims. And about 40% of the claims that we file are inbound shipment. And to, to add a little bit of context here, there's about 28, 29 different claim types that exist with FBA. And 40% of those fall into this one category of inbound shipment. So what that looks like is, let's say, Alexander, you sent in a shipment of 1,000 units to FBA. Jeff mm -hmm. Bezos is not going to call you and say, all right, Alexander, I got 900 of your 1,000. Have a fabulous Thursday. No, that's not going to happen. It is the responsibility of the seller to monitor their FBA account on Seller Central and to see, okay, this shipment says receiving, they're still working on it. This shipment says, you know, in transit, all right, all good. Wait a second, this shipment says closed out, units expected as 1,000, units received as 900. What happened here? So that's really what a discrepancy is. And when it comes to filing a claim, the process is very easy. It does have to be filed by a human. There's no way to automate the claims filing process. I, I suppose there is, but it's entirely against Amazon's terms of service. So a person mm -hmm. does have to file those claims. And then Amazon will conduct an internal investigation and they will either say, whoops, so sorry, Alexander, found your box of a hundred units. We're going to put that back in your inventory so you can sell it. Or they'll say, mm -hmm so sorry, it's gone. It was accidentally you know, destroyed or we just straight up lost it. And what they'll do is they will reimburse the seller the list price of the product minus the Amazon fees. Mm -hmm. it's, so it's as though you sold the item. So it's not like, what did you pay for this? Okay, let's give you back your cost of goods sold. It is the list price, again, minus the fees, but it's the exact same as if you would have made a sale on the marketplace, but it's a double win because you didn't have to pay the PPC to sell that item. You didn't have to pay the advertising on it. So that's kind of in short, the easiest example that we can give. Now there's other discrepancies that exist. So let's say uh, weights and dimensions, for example, and those can be incorrect on Amazon side for any number of reasons, as easy as someone could have fat fingered a dimension, something as silly mm -hmm. as the cubic scanner that it runs through the poly bag that's on your product scanned as being oversized and your product is not. So that's one tip that we give sellers too, is to either vacuum seal or shrink wrap, keep your packaging as tight to your product as possible. That way you don't accidentally mm -hmm. get hit with additional fees. Another discrepancy type that exists that sometimes seller experience is customer returns. If the customer says that they're going to return a ceramic llama planter that I have binder clips in right now, but if they say they're going to return this and instead they return back a stapler, well, you've reimbursed that customer already, but you didn't get your product back. So there's a process with Amazon to say, hey, wait a second, you reimbursed them, even though it was the incorrect item. I need to be re-reimbursed for that discrepancy. So all different kinds of discrepancies exist. You know, like I said, there's about 28 kinds, but inbound shipments is going to be the easiest to process. And it's the most common that we see. And it's the easiest to audit for, honestly. Does that answer your question? I feel like I gave a lot there and I've Yes, you have answered the question. And of course, it is very interesting how to get some money from Jeff Bezos, because usually <laughs> he gets all the money. And now we're speaking about how to get money from him. So how does Gitida uh, work and how Gitida, Gitida helps exactly? Yeah, great question. So Gitida helps to build the most thorough process for finding these discrepancies possible. So we actually have some patented state-of-the-art technology that we use via direct API into the seller seller central account to do an 18 month look back on their account to find these discrepancies and to get reimbursements for. So the longest claim window that exists when you're selling 3P on FBA is 18 months. Now there are some claim windows that are smaller, like weights and dimensions is only three months. And we'll talk about that in a minute, but we start with an 18 month look back to have a comprehensive look at what is left on the table for the seller. Mm -hmm. So our dashboard, our tool goes back that far and then daily audits your account moving forward. 
And then what happens is after the system has identified a discrepancy that requires a claim, we kick that over to our team of claim specialists. We have over 80 folks on our claims team that actually used to work on Amazon's auditing and claims department. So they know how to kind of read between the lines and word things in a way that Amazon is going to find favorable. You, you're like, you like have hunted 80 people from Amazon. <laughs> sure you know they were on the team before i got here i'm not sure if we had hunted okay. them or or if we you know just have a really solid culture and they were excited to join <laughs> but um but we, we do have over 80 folks that came from amazon and okay. so they understand the internal processes because one of the biggest one of the biggest uh obstacles that sellers face when they're filing these claims is amazon will just come back and say no that's that's not worded correctly or wrong document and then it's like mm -hmm. okay how should this be phrased? What document do you need? And they're not super great at giving a lot of explanation for what they need. So part of what has led to us having the highest success rate in the industry of over 90% successfully closed claims is that claims team, because they know what Amazon is looking for, how to phrase the claim, how to communicate with them, et cetera. So we start with that 18 month look back and then audit the accounts daily moving forward so that we can identify these discrepancies in near real time, because your claims are expiring every single day. So it's, you have 18 months from the time the discrepancy occurs to file that claim. So it's not from the time you start auditing. Okay. I have 18 months to do, you know, all of this. No, if, if it occurred 17 months and 20 days ago, you got about 10 left to do that. So we want to audit everything as continuously as possible and file those claims as quickly as possible because communications back and forth can take quite some time and we never want to leave money on the table for our sellers. So that's in short kind of how we do it. We do have a state-of-the-art dashboard where sellers have full visibility into what we are doing on their account. They'll see what's expected of the reimbursement, where we are in the claims process. And we even have some really awesome tools to help move the process further along more quickly, like our weights and dimensions tool. So you can actually update the weights and dimensions of your product in the Katita dashboard while you're looking at your other claims so that you don't have to be logging in between two systems all day long. So since we have that direct API, pushes that info right through. And then we also have something called DocMaster, which helps satisfy for our private label sellers, brand owners, manufacturers. It doesn't work for resellers, unfortunately. But for those private label sellers, we have something called DocMaster that actually creates the packing slip within our dashboard to satisfy Amazon's requirement for proof of inventory ownership. And we've worked for a very long time on this alongside Amazon. It's totally terms of service approved, but it helps for those situations where maybe the seller doesn't have the documentation or they lost mm -hmm. it or, you know, it'll take some time to find. They can create that packing slip directly within our dashboard, send it through to Amazon, and that helps file those claims much more quickly. And just if they don't want to take the time to fill out the form, da, 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 we actually have a done for you service that's completely included in our pricing. So access to the whole dashboard and all of its features and its add-on services is included in our rates. So that's what we're doing. We're helping sellers to maximize their profitability by maximizing their refunds and minimizing those FBA fees. Do you want to show uh, like uh, the dashboard or some something how it uh, how it looks? I I unfortunately don't have access to the dashboard. Um, oh, okay. We we would have to do that on a, on a separate Zoom with someone with credentials. So if we can cut okay, that part cool. out. <laughs> yes, of course, of course okay. we will. So what about the reimbursement policy? Amazon reimbursement policy. Would will, will you share something? Some you know, life hacks for for examples now. Yeah, because sure. I so think, I think I think it is a big one. Maybe some points from there. So yeah, the the reimbursement policy I kind of touched on it is you know there's various claim windows that exist to get reimbursed for these discrepancies. So you want to be sure to know the claim window type for the claim that you have. And their reimbursement policy is that they will reimburse you the list price for the product, which is extremely generous and really makes sense for them to do because then you have more money to reimburse, um, excuse me, reinvest into the business. So they'll reimburse you the list price of the product, like I said, minus the fees. And really just sellers aren't aware of that. One of the greatest mm -hmm. points of miseducation is they'll say, well, 
Amazon already emails me with my reimbursements. And sometimes they do. Sometimes there is a situation that Amazon finds on their own and they say, hey, Alexander, so sorry, we accidentally destroyed this product. Here's your reimbursement for this. But that is far and beyond nowhere near all of your reimbursement types. Those are just the ones that Mm. Amazon finds on its own that are glaringly obvious that they have a duty to tell you about and to make right on. Because think about it, if they had to spend all day chasing their tail, looking yeah. for any possible product that could have been lost, two-day delivery would go away. I mean, their operations would just positively mm-hmm. plummet. So it's great it that is, they have this it, program. It, yeah, it is so. It, it looks as fantastic as government that is searching for everybody who paid too much taxes, you know? <laughs> right, right, yeah. It, exactly. <laughs> it like reality. <laughs> Right. It's, it, it just doesn't make any sense. It, it doesn't behoove them to do that. It does behoove them to make right on these errors, but it doesn't behoove them to spend their time saying, you know, let's try to not lose this extra body. You know what I mean? It just doesn't make sense. Yeah. So, so yes, their policy... They are ready to pay, but they are not chasing the right. cases where they need to pay. <laughs> well, they will chase the cases where they need to pay once they are aware of it, but they're not going to yeah. do their own detective work on their own work. So um, it's a really okay. generous program that they have. And and I don't know of anything else like it on any other marketplace. And we get a question all the time, too, especially as of late of, you know, could you do this for FBM for Fulfilled by Merchant? Mm-hmm. and it depends on the three PL that you have. The problem is a lot of them probably don't have this robust of a reimbursement program in place, especially if you have multiple three PLs, they're all going to have different systems. They're not all going to have the same data. So I don't know of a service that exists like this through FBM. I won't say that it's kind of impossible to I do. Would but tell you, I would tell you like uh, as an owner of a fulfillment network mm-hmm. and this person that is in logistics like all my life, all never logistics uh, companies have uh, paid back the uh, like unreceived profits exactly like never they always yeah. ask for the cost they uh, okay if we did something wrong you've got the cost we will cover it okay it, yeah. it, it's our responsibility but what amazon is doing by paying the unreceived profits that's crazy it it is but it's so it's so smart right? It helps the sellers. It helps them in their platform. So that's, that's one of the reasons that what we do works so well. And, you know, obviously why we love Amazon. So. (laughs) Cool. Cool. And so uh, uh, sellers can apply like every day for the reimbursement or like once a year, once a month. (laughs) There, there is a limit to the number of reimbursement claims that a seller can file in a day. If you file too many, it will bog the system down. But what Gatita does is we throttle the number that we file a day on a seller's account to reduce or I I've never known of a seller getting suspended because of Gatita's efforts. So we make sure that we're always under the threshold of what is going to throw a red flag for Amazon, but you're, you want to stay as on top of them as possible. And that's why I say it's important. You know, when we talk about sellers who are filing for these claims on their own and auditing the account on their own, they should do it more regularly than not. So I always recommend that sellers are auditing their account at least one, because then you're going to find these in real time. You're going to have only a few each time that you file so that you're not checking it once every month or every quarter and going, Holy crap. I've, 50 things that are missing. So it it helps Amazon to manage their workload in the claims investigation process. And it also helps you to get your money back more quickly. So check it more frequently, file those claims in a timely manner, and yeah. you'll you'll be all good. You'll be in good Amazon standing. <laughs> I'm just now thinking as a logistics person that maybe Amazon had so many costs on storing and handling all the goods they have that they have like miss uh, fulfilled during uh, like a big period of time mm-hmm. that they understood that it is easier to to reimburse to do something with it because yeah. there are huge, huge amount of things right in their yeah. volume <laughs> yes it's it's massive and you know people ask all the time it's like well why does this happen why do these discrepancies occur think about the amount of product that's flying through there i yeah. i, I 
could not even imagine. I think of it visually as, do you know the Disney movie Monsters, Inc.? Monsters, Inc.? Yeah. Uh, Is it one, this one with the monsters that come uh, when the kids sleep? Yes. So there's a... It's Monsters University, something like this, no? Oh, that's, so they might have a different name for it. That's a sequel here. But here it's (laughs) called Monsters, Inc. And in the original movie, when they go to the doors and they're on the the conveyor belt of the doors, that's just how I see all of this product flying through Amazon, (laughs) honestly. That's the only thing that I can think is happening in there. But imagine, I mean, it's so easy when you have people moving boxes i'm sure the robots are great but you know technology makes mistakes so that's why this occurs is just genuine honest error there's no nefarious no no bad yeah that's cool yeah. Where, that you were helping that there is company that is helping to handle all this yeah. uh, reimbursements that's that's a really help uh, for uh, sellers mm-hmm. so can you uh, give us a short takeaway, like how to uh, get this money, one to 3% from your annual turnover? What to do? Short takeaway. Short takeaway. Yeah. Audit your account frequently, file your claims quickly. And if you want to take that time and effort off of your plate, you can sign up with Katita and we're happy to do that for you. Cool, wonderful. The second question, as always, is what not to do. Like short takeaway, what mistakes not to repeat? You have seen it several times. Like, guys, don't do this. Yeah, so don't skimp out on the quality of your product because no amount of PPC, no amount of Facebook ads or, you know, sexy packaging is going to help a a bad product. So Focus on the quality of your product. Don't skimp out on that. Cool. Thank you. And the last question, as always, is slightly philosophical. So uh, what to do, short takeaway, to be successful in life in general? Your thoughts on it? (laughs) Yeah, I'm going to steal yours. I'm going to say energy management because I thought originally (laughs) about, you know, be sure to spend, have some work-life balance as we call it, spend time on your passions, but also your loved ones. Cause that's really going to be who keeps you afloat and sustained, you know, keep your cup filled. But I like how you phrased it of energy management. So work when right. you have the energy rest when you need to. And that's really going to be the key. I think. Thank you. Thank you. That's super cool. So uh, of course there will be, uh, are all the, your contacts under the video. Perfect. So uh, just tell everybody what uh, they can ask, what questions can they send to you? Yeah, you know, anything and everything about reimbursements, about myself, happy to answer for you guys. My email is just lisa at getida.com, G-E-T-I-D-A. And you can ask us about, you know, pricing models. We didn't cover that. So Getida is a pay per recovery service, meaning we only get paid when you get paid. So happy to expand on that more. Um, but really anything that you guys are, are curious about, we host and sponsor a lot of events in the industry. So if you want to know if we're going to be speaking at something or if you're interested in attending an event and want to learn more, you can reach out to me about that. But what I want to offer for your listeners, Alexander, is actually a promo. So like I said, Gatita's pay per recovery. <laughs> so we only get paid when you get paid. And what we'd like to offer for you guys is your first 400 in FBA reimbursements free. So when you sign up for Gatita at gatita.com forward slash WAPI, W-A-P-I, you'll get that first 400 in free reimbursement. So go on ahead and check that out and we'll be oh, happy to that's have you. Super generous, super generous. Guys, uh, use it. Use it, send your <laughs> free questions. Money. Yeah, free money over here. And, and the reimbursement is also almost free money, right? It is. It's it's doubly mm-hmm. free money. Absolutely. So uh, everybody who has questions about the logistics in European Union, you know, f- storing your goods, picking and packing, we've got 11 warehouses all over the Europe, delivering very fast, D2C, multi-channel, different marketplaces, not only Amazon. We have the prep center in Germany and UK. We help you with 3PL for Amazon, like everything, anything you need about the logistics, Just contact us and we will help you. You can find my contacts under the video. And of course, stay tuned and stay with us. Wappy webinars every week, something special for you. (laughs) Thank you, Lisa, for being with us today. Oh, thank Thank you so much for having me.
Cool. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye, guys. <laughs>